Hello everyone. Uh, this month, March, is Fraud Prevention Month, at least in Canada. And, you know, I thought I'd talk a little bit about fraud and fraud prevention. Now, obviously, education, uh, educating people on how to recognize a fraud is well worth it, right? Uh, we definitely need to educate people. If people don't know what the signs of fraud are, uh, what the signs of a scam are, then obviously they're more likely to fall for them. Also, we need to educate people on things that seem like they're legitimate on how to check them. And, of course, that's not difficult. A lot of scams will, will consist of uh, a letter or an email or, or, some, or even a telephone call where the uh, but particularly in emails and letters postal letters and that still does happen by, by regular post uh, they'll have incoher nearly incoherent poor grammar, poor spelling uh, weird word choices uh, they'll They'll have very varying fonts all over their, the document. Uh, it'll generally look like a mess. Uh, and if you see that, then you can be reasonably sure it's not legitimate. Because uh, if it's purporting to be from a lawyer, well, the lawyer should be having things in at least passable English, assuming we're dealing with this in English. Um, and if the... Uh, the language is incoherent, uh, then there's a really good chance it's not legitimate, or if it is, you're not going to be able to communicate effectively anyway, so maybe you want to give that a pass. Another uh, big red flag is if it sounds too good to be true. Now, too good to be true means anything where you're getting something where you didn't do anything, you know. Uh, a lottery win where you didn't actually enter a lottery always fake. Uh, that inheritance from uh, a long-lost relative you've never heard of is almost certainly fake. It will definitely be fake if you have to send money before you can get the inheritance. It will also definitely be fake if they're asking for uh, copies of identification documents and so on. They won't be doing that if it's legitimate. Uh, if they need to check that you're who you're the right person, they will have investigated all of that ahead of time if they're legitimate. If it says, uh, well, we have this inheritance, but there's no heirs and your name is similar, so we think we can get away with, uh, you know, with giving this to you. As in the invitation to be part of the fraud. Yeah, don't do that. That's definitely fraud. Um... I think there's all sorts of things like that that you can be sure this is fake. Uh, there are other things where it's less clear. Uh, so you can, uh, so what you need to do for those, like say you get a call from someone purporting to be from the Canada Revenue Agency. Well, if you think it might be legitimate, the first thing you do is get the information from the caller. The Canada Revenue Agency will tell you enough information that you can figure out what they're on about. Uh, you get the information from the caller, then you go to the, then you go and check with the CRA separately. You call them back, but you don't use the number that the caller gave you. You remember, you're checking on the caller's legitimacy, so you can't trust anything they give you. So if they give you a telephone number, if they're legitimate, that'll be a legitimate number. If they're not legitimate, it won't be a legitimate number, but you have no way to know that. So you're going to have to find contact information for whomever the caller or emailer or whatever is purporting to be through some other means. So let's say the Canada Revenue Agency, you go on their website, find their contact information call them at, at their number directly and then ask if the, the this other caller was, was, was legitimate. Actually, they'd be happy to know about the frauds in their name. Uh, and you'll find out, they, they can look up based on your account number, the CRA, they can look up based on your account number 
whether there's any pending communication with you or if there's some flag on your account. Police departments, that's another big one. Uh, callers will pretend to be a police, uh, a police officer from some remote police department or something, uh, or even local. If that's the case, get the information, get whatever case number is relevant, get all the relevant details. If they don't have it, they're not legitimate. Get their badge number, all, like all of their, their information, their name, etc. Then you call that police department through their publicly available contact information. And then you ask about this. And if uh, it's legitimate, you'll probably end up talking to the person who just called you, right? Or they'll be able to tell you what the situation is. But odds are pretty good it's not going to be legitimate. Right? So, there you go. It's not going to be legitimate. Uh, you know, and generally, cold calls out of the blue, not legitimate. Another big thing that, that happens a lot is that call out of the blue from computer support or something like that, uh, and, or appliance repair or something like that, and the, the gimmick goes, and this is not new with computers, the gimmick goes that uh, they have had uh, some report from some means of some issue with your device. Either they're representing the manufacturer and there's a recall, or uh, they've uh, detected a problem with your computer that needs to be fixed or something like that. Those calls are always scams. Always. Um, but anyway, uh, you can be pretty sure that anything like that, out of the blue, is probably not legitimate. Um, and of course, the too-good-to-be-true stuff is probably not legitimate, as I said. Uh, anything with, you know, bad grammar or something, you should be skeptical of. But generally, all around, you should check with things. Certainly never send anything to anybody without checking on their legitimacy first. Well, an another big scam that, that I've seen, uh, someone tried to perpetrate it on me, in fact. Um, you know, ages ago, I was thinking about renting a room out to, to people, you know, to get a little bit extra cash to cover the mortgage, right? So I listed it in an appropriate place, and I got some inquiries, right? There was a couple of scams, that common scams, that uh, potential landlords get hit by. One of them is, uh, can, I, uh, can I ship you uh, uh, some, uh, my furniture, uh, but the guy's going to need payment, so uh, uh, can you pay, pay him for it, and uh, then I'll reimburse you. Uh, and they might even give you a check up front. Uh, uh, but generally they will give you a check uh, so you cash the check and use that money to to uh, pay the uh, the the mover guy who will invariably want cash and then uh, six months later that check bounces uh, or you'll uh, you know so so that's a common one uh, or the someone will call, set up an appointment to uh, to view the place on Monday, and then they'll turn up Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening, or on some other day you said you weren't available, and then the, you know then the if they find you at home they'll say well can I move in early, and it's like well no, because we haven't agreed to anything yet. Uh, or, but what they're doing is they're casing the place, right? They know you're going to be there on Monday, but they suspect you won't be there on Sunday, say. So they'll turn up on Sunday, and if they don't find you there, they'll either uh, jimmy the place and steal your stuff, or uh, they'll make a note of it and they'll case it on other days, right? But what they're trying to do is get in and get a look at your stuff. Uh, but if you happen to be there on the, when they turn up unannounced, 
well, okay, you probably stopped that scam. They'll try something else on you, you know, the move-in early scam, the, uh, the furniture scam. They'll try any number of things, the check cashing scam. They'll try any number of things on you. Uh, they'll, they'll also try the uh, playing one party off against another, landlord-wise. So they'll say, uh, well, so-and-so said, uh, or something like that, if they know about the, uh, the, the other, you know, like they'll, they'll make out, well, you're not the person I talked to. Like if they talk to, to me and then they get, they get a, a lady at the door, right? They'll, go, they'll, uh, they'll try to play one off against the other, you know, things like that, right? Uh, so there's a lot of possible scams out there. And obviously, they can't be completely prevented because there's always going to be dishonest people. And there's always going to be people that fall for it, gullible marks. Um, so scams are definitely a thing that it's worth preventing. And education is definitely important. And that's what the first part of this was all about. There's a lot of scams out there. And a lot of things that don't look like a scam actually are. So you really do need to pay attention. And if there's somebody in your life with a cognitive impairment or uh, somebody who's fairly naive, uh, young or inexperienced or whatever, well then uh, you might want to be watching out for them as much as you can as well. You know, if the, you catch them doing something that looks like they're participating in a scam, you might want to flag it for them, right? You know, uh, you might want to, right? Uh, you know, just as you know, courtesy, right? They might not appreciate it. They might, they might think that you're, uh, uh, you're just against them getting rich or something, but, you know, at least try, right? Educate them if you can. Now, there's another side to this, another side to this prevention, and that's something that is on the part of the law enforcement agencies. And this is something where they've fallen down Badly, at least recently. Uh, they will talk to you if you are a victim of a scam. Now, the victim is someone who's put money out or shared private information or something like that. They will deal with you. They will take the information. They will open up a case file. They will do whatever, you know, do, do something about it. They will talk to you. But if you didn't fall for the scam, if you called them and said, I have uh, the documentation for an attempted scam here, do you want it? You'll almost certainly be told no. And you will, uh, you know, you'll be asked, did you fall for it? No. Then you'll be told, usually politely, to piss off. Uh, which is the major problem we have right now. Uh, law enforcement agencies are not interested in proactive policing. They're not interested in information on things that haven't happened yet, but might. Uh, particularly uh, scams where they don't have a victim. They're not interested in preventing them. They, they only want the information once there's a victim. Which, of course, uh, People like me who didn't fall for it calling up a police department saying, I have information on a possible scam, getting told no, piss off, means they don't have the information that I had if they have a scam victim who fell victim to the same scam. So they're not doing anybody any favors by not collecting the information. The other thing they're likely to do is uh, they might, if they're, they are interested, they'll ask you some questions that they'll determine that the perpetrator is not in their jurisdiction and then they'll tell you to piss off. That's also not helpful uh, because it's not my job to call a police department uh, 2,000 miles away to report something like this. They're not going to listen to me. And I can't go in and talk to them physically, right? So... Uh, you know, they're, they're not going to have any particular motivation to talk to me, right? And they're not going to have, they're not going to be able to validate my identity or anything like that. Uh, so where this goes wrong is the, the local police department that you're talking to, they should be taking the information 
and then identify which police department is or departments or other authorities are relevant and passing it on themselves. They have the information. I don't. And they're more likely to be taken seriously. I won't be. Now, something that might seem legitimate on the surface is redirecting me to an agency who actually deals with this stuff. Okay, maybe that's fine. Still, you could take the information and pass it on yourselves. Seriously. Just do that. Better service for your constituents. Uh, but if that agency uh, is uncontactable due to uh, a phone system that doesn't work or a website that's non-functional or an information gathering uh, form on a website that fails, then it's not helpful. And I have been on the receiving end of this type of redirect. So it was clear that this agency that I was redirected to wasn't even interested in getting the information on frauds with victims, let alone information on frauds where there was no victim. Their form for collecting information had a, a checkbox or whatever for did you fall for it or not, but then all of the form fields that are only relevant if you fell for it were required fields. So if you didn't fall for it, you couldn't fill out the form. Uh, and also, uh, the options to upload supporting documentation, scanned uh, documents or whatever, uh, had asininely low file size restrictions, like half a meg or something like that. Well, no. If you got a 10 page document, it ain't fitting in half a meg if you're scanning it. So, you know, okay. So uh, law enforcement needs to be a little bit more proactive and a little bit more active in general on the preventive side of the fraud. They need to make it easier for me as a citizen to provide information on a suspected scam. They just, you know, the local police department should take the information whether it's in their jurisdiction or not, they should take the information and then they should pass it on to the relevant authorities if they can identify them. They'll sure have a better way, better chance of identifying them than I will. They have access to databases I don't. And if there's a national authority or something like that that is surveilling this stuff or collecting information and collating it, then they can pass it on in the correct format and they can batch it you know they can collect all the information they're getting from their constituents into a batch and send it off to the the central authority uh, you know make it easier for people to report these things when there's no victim and if you could if you could do that then there's a good chance that at least somebody with information would be able to get after some of these scammers before they take 10,000 people for $100,000 each. Uh, so, you know, and, and I think this, uh, this highlights a, a fundamental hypocrisy on the part of a lot of law enforcement agencies. They're, they'll go hard on the education side of things, great, because that's easy. But they won't dedicate any resources for whatever reason and they have excuses out the wazoo they won't dedicate any resources to investigating non-victim uh, fraud complaints they just tell people to piss off get them off the phone so they can get on to whatever the next person uh, is complaining about so they can tell them to piss off and get off the phone likely um, Yes, there's some bitterness here. I was told to piss off politely when I reported a potential, you know, a, a, a potential scam that came by mail. 
They weren't interested in talking to me. They fought me off on an agency with non-functional contact information and a non-functional website. They, uh, you know, so really, we've got to deal with this, this hypocrisy, right? Education's great, but you need enforcement too, and you need proactive enforcement. You need both. But instead, they're more interested in uh, setting up more speed traps and uh, collecting fines and than uh, uh, investigating potential fraud and, and that sort of thing. So, yeah. Uh, and let me just say that I understand that manpower is an issue. They don't have infinite manpower. I understand that. But they, they won't even take the information to put it into an information system that nobody looks at. They won't even do that. Whereas if, if they would take the information and put it into an information system, then at least somebody investigating a, a, vic, a, a, a fraud with a victim might get some additional information. They might, they might find some information that the victim doesn't have. So they're not doing the, themselves any favors by not collecting the information which is what basically my point. So if they're not going to do anything with it, they should collect it and index it properly, collate it and all of that so that people can, other investigators can make use of it if it proves to be relevant. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to basically leave off on that aspect of things because it's going to turn into a rant and uh, the last three times I tried to record this I got onto a big rant and I don't want to get too down on you know the local police here because for the most part they do a decent job it's just that they don't seem to be interested in proactive preventive measures uh, especially if they might take 20 minutes of somebody's time to make out a report you know uh, that that's really what it comes down to but anyway, uh, I'll leave off there. Uh, and again, education is important. Educate yourself on the signs of scams. Uh, and your default position when somebody calls you out of the blue should be that it's not legitimate. That should be your default position. Uh, if you don't know who they are and they're calling you out of the blue, be skeptical. Assume it's a scam until you have evidence to the contrary. And if you have evidence to the contrary, by all means, you know, run with it. But if you're if you have even the smallest amount of doubt, don't. Check do more investigation until you're sure. Or until you you've proven that it's a scam. You know, it doesn't take much to avoid being a victim. Uh, it, it just means you need to be skeptical. You need to not trust everybody. Uh, trust cannot, like absolute trust cannot be the default position. That's, that's really the unfortunate truth. Unconditional trust cannot be the default position. Especially when it comes to resources that are important to you, Think, you, you your private information and uh, your hard-earned money, right? Your, the stuff you need to live and your identity. That's where you should be, you should be on the I don't trust you side until trust is proven, uh, relevant, proven to be a good choice. Sure, you know, you need to uh, judge the situation, you know, like if, if what they're asking for is innocuous or something like that, then maybe it doesn't matter if you trust them or not. But anything sensitive or anything valuable, be skeptical. Don't make an investment in something just because you know the guy asking you for the money. 
don't make the, an investment in something just because they're promising uh, 20 twenty dollars on the dollar for re, for return right that's probably a Ponzi scheme if if you're getting one of those um, you know so generally be skeptical but you also need to control your skepticism in cases where it doesn't really matter right so you need to exercise your judgment you need to train your judgment uh, but still, learn the signs that something's a scam. Uh, the big ones, big return on a, on a tiny investment. You need to pay money to get money. Uh, they're inviting you to be party to something that looks hinky. Uh, somebody's called you out of the blue and you don't know who they are especially if they're asking you for information. Or it's a robocall. That's a very good sign a lot of the time. Uh, really, those are, are pretty good, uh, good signs. If you have caller ID on your phone, if the phone number doesn't look valid, uh, like it's got a digit that can't possibly be right, or it's all zeros, or it's got something else in there, that's a good sign. Uh, like there's all manner of things that can clue you in and anything that looks remotely fishy you should trigger you to think further but anyway that's my uh, ramble for uh, the start of March uh, so I'm gonna leave off here I don't want to get it get too much more rambly here so I'll leave off I'll mention that I have a patreon so if you feel like you want to support the channel uh, you can go over to patreon.com slash lost wizard you know any anything would be appreciated but you know what if you don't want to you don't have to and of course uh, the usual like comment subscribe share whatever and if you've watched this far thanks for watching